Good afternoon. I'd like to announce the program for Symphonic Band, if you would like to mark your programs. Celebration Overture, Come Thy Font of Every Blessing, Hymn of St. James, British Eighth March, and Mount Everest. <coughs> Sixteen years ago, I met a nice conductor at the best place to meet a musician, summer band camp. Uh, at the time, I turned to Mr. Allman, director of Godwin, and I said, we must get this gentleman to our children. They must see him. They must hear what he has to say. He is a passionate advocate for music education, and you're about to see the results of a wonderful weekend of work. He's conducted in, uh, or spoke in all 50 states. He's also been across the world with Music God, delivering a great message for all young people. So please help me welcome to the stage Professor Peter, Bo uh, Peter Boonchat.
Good evening and thank you. The piece we're about to perform needs a bit of an explanation. For it is beautiful in its own right, but understanding the story behind it uh, brings meaning to it beyond words. The composer, Reber Clark, decided to write a piece in honor of his parents, who at the time were natives of Richmond. And his mom lived here up until her passing just a few years ago. So Chip was visiting, and he decided this piece had to be written. And it's based on the hymn to Level of Mortal Flesh Keep Silent, the hymn of St. James. And it, like many pieces that have been written for centuries, was inspired by one question. It's a question that many pieces, many pieces of artwork, many pieces of music, have been written to try to understand. And it's that one question of whether good or evil will prevail. And throughout music history, we have many examples. This piece, I think, may be one of the most profound. He took the hymn, which basically talks about good and evil, and he decided to take from it certain notes that were beautiful, and they represent good, and certain notes that represented evil. Constantly through this piece, the question is posed, the answer given. And most of the time, the question is asked by the horn. For centuries, the horn is thought of as the heroic, regal one of good, only to be rebuffed every time by other members of the ensemble who say, nope, I think evil will prevail. And the horns are relentless, and they keep at it until finally they change the entire ensemble. In one moment, good turns evil right. It happens to be on the downbeat of the grand Alleluia. And only then, at the words, Amen, the horns themselves challenge the world and say, I hate to break it to you, but evil will always triumph. The band in its entirety says, you're wrong. Good prevails and shouts amen again. The horns again, with the most violent of sounds we possess in music, says you're wrong. Evil wins. And we again say, amen. Let it be that good will prevail. The final statement of the horns is one of the utmost evil until they are turned by good one final time. We resoundingly say good will always win. And the last sound you will hear is the strike of a gong, a tam-tam, that's hit a certain way to have a very special ring, which we hope you will hear. For it is a gathering of angels' halos above us all to watch over and make sure that good will always triumph. The Hymn of St. James by Reaper.
thank you so much. Isn't him a Saint James a hoot? We'll let you in on a little secret. Your native son, Reaper Clark, um, is, let's just say, an extremely demanding gentleman when it comes to his music. All music. And I had the courage yesterday, after these young people had had the music for, what, about eight hours? Six hours? Something like that? To call him as he was leaving a recording studio, from the recording session, uh, to play him the end of him St. James. And I believe his exact words were something along the lines of, that was wonderful. Was that right? That was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. So we were part to say that. That's I sweat blood for the man on some of his pieces, and the response was, it was fine. <laughs> that's it? That's it. So for them to get that, that's pretty astounding. So, and he sends his best and his regards to, to Richmond. So uh, before concluding our portion of the program here, I would be remiss if not to say a couple of things. And the first is that um, for the 20 minutes or so we've been on this stage, um, you have been part of a giant fraud. It is a scam. It is a lie. If the world were fair, newspaper reporters would be here to cover it, and I would be arrested. The fraud is that I would allow you to think, as you've listened to these folks on this stage for this portion, to allow you to think for one motion, one moment in time that I had anything whatsoever to do with what you're hearing. The fact is, the people who deserve the applause, the people who deserve the credit, the people who deserve the time standing in front of these amazing musicians making music, are the teachers of music from across this wonderful district. The folks who put the instruments in their hands the first day, the folks who taught them to walk in time when they were this big, the folks who got them to sing and taught them about music and gave them instruments and got them from the beginning of their days as a young musician to the cream of the crop. On the best of days and the worst of days, that day before Thanksgiving vacation when it snows, and the best of days all dressed in tuxes and gowns. The ones who are the cream of the crop and the ones that need a little extra time. They give their life's blood. They give all they have in their minds and their hearts and their souls so that our young people can have joy and beauty in their lives and that our world can be better because of them. Would you help me set the record straight and thank the teachers of music in the great so she wasn't saying much of anything. My dad would give me this big bear hug and said, every time, the music was so wonderful, I just wish the guest conductor wouldn't always give a speech. <laughs> and with all due respect to my dad, I'd be remiss if not to pass along a few words. First, I want to thank Mrs. Birdsong and the entire staff and administration here for making the most hospitable, wonderful, joyous place for us to make music and for all of their tireless efforts. the officers and the members of this wonderful district for all their efforts to bring about all of this and to allow us to have this focus on music today here. I want to thank the administrators of every school district in the district for knowing what is truly important. I want to thank the parents for their support. Little did you know when they brought on their instruments the first day, started playing, and you looked them old face in the eye and lied to them and said, no honey, you sound wonderful. <laughs> that someday they'd be sitting on a stage like this and it would be indeed true. But without your support and your kindness, nothing of it would happen. And last, the folks behind me. The great writer Carlyle said, music is a sort of unfathomable speech that allows one at once to gaze into the infinite. 
I'm not sure if he was ever here, but I know exactly what he meant because for two days now I've had the honor of standing and gazing into the infinite. You could not ask for more remarkable people anywhere. You know they're great musicians because you can hear that. What I need you to understand is they are equally great as people. There is not one person on this stage that I would not take home and make a member of my family. And I mean it from the bottom of my heart. The care and concern they gave to me and the music and each other is profound. You have a great gift in this district. Music is one of those things. But the human beings that you are sending out to the world bring you honor. And I am here to tell you they are spectacular people. And I hope they know from the bottom of my heart I thank them for every moment they laughed at my dumb jokes, put up with my blunders, and allowed me to listen as they made music. Thank you. presence looming from above, we will leave you with the last piece of our portion of the program. It's an easy, easy piece to describe, quite difficult to play. The program is simple. It takes you on a journey. For those of you like me who will never climb Mount Everest, in the next few minutes you'll know what it feels like because it tells the story of starting by looking at this mountain and then going up the side with every stumble and with every joyous view until seven final steps take you to the peak where at once you look out and you have arrived at the top of Mount Everest. Until our paths cross again with our thanks. Masada Galantes, Mount Everest.